got some logs here that have some termite damage. And I wasn't sure how deep it went. And so I took my chainsaw and I cut in about an inch and a half. As you can see there. So I, I could make sure that I had some solid wood back in there. Um, in the process of hewing some faces. It will be an inch and a half thick. And I'll be able to attach them right here. I'll just have to take all this off down through here. And, uh, and then clean it up real good so that I could get a new face attached to that because we couldn't ever chink to what was there because it was in such bad shape. I don't think that would ever hold a, a big staple for the wire last that we'll put in there. You can see those little buggers did a lot of damage. We're going to be able to take care of it. The rest of the log from there on back is good and solid. So I'll be able to do some repair. The yellow marks here is where some square nails were. I'd pulled them out, but I'm not sure that some of them didn't break down in there, and I don't want to hit them with a chainsaw. Oh, if these logs could talk. I went to the sawmill this morning, and I found some timbers that they had that had been sawed for a long time. These are four by nines. What I'm doing is making my faces out of this. I'll be able to actually get two faces out of this one timber, and then I can shape the top and the bottom of it when I attach it to the wall to give it a natural log shape. And what I've done, I've gone ahead and scored it, similar to uh, the way they scored the old logs. This uh, place right here, there's several places on the cabin where the logs, were, uh, this is actually where they come in, cut in from two, two angles here and knocked a big chunk off called a juggle and a lot of those are visible and so I just put that in here every so often just so that I could match up as close as I could to uh, what was there and I'm hewing these with the foot ads. I've used a, uh, a garden sprayer just a three gallon pump-up sprayer and uh, I just spray these logs with water to try to soften that wood just a little bit because these are like I say these are pretty well seasoned and there's not going to be much shrinkage ever take place, I don't think, in these. But to be able to hew these, it's so much easier if that wood's just a little bit softer than what it is right now. So I just take a little sprayer and just soak it down real good. may do that two or three times. And then I'll hew it with the foot ads. <laughs> started taking these old faces off these old logs that uh, had some termite damage you can see right in here and here now this is good solid wood but there is that's from a big old wood bore there back in years past I made a kind of a test cut yesterday just to see how solid this was inside because I certainly didn't want to have to replace these logs. Uh, I wanted to keep all of the original wood as possible. And so I've already got this face here kind of worked back and ground down. I'm just making a series of uh, the skill saw cuts uh, inch and a half deep. That's how thick the faces will be. And I just have to chisel that off and then grind it. It's, it's a pretty good ordeal to do this, but uh, I'm saving, especially on the inside, uh, the bulk of the log. Now this, you can see how the termites have really done some damage here, down in there. From this test cut here, I should be, once I get in there an inch and a half, have some solid wood to attach uh, a new face to. So I've got four four logs here to work on. This one looks good on the top, but underneath, you can see the termites really did a number there. This will be actually where I stop with this one. And I've got a, a line on this one, and I've scored that. I'll have to clean that back with a chisel.
got the faces replaced or on there. I used a lot of construction adhesive behind these. They're an inch and a half thick and I just uh, set my level up here and uh, scored a mark right down through it and cut to that and then cut my pieces to fit. So you would never really know by looking at these that there was so much termite damage back behind them. And this is thick enough that I can staple my hardware cloth, my wire mesh in there for the chinking and it'll hold. The way it was, the wood was so soft out here on the edge, it would have never held a staple. And uh, I just took my chainsaw, a little carving bar, and just kind of went along here with the tip of it and just cut pretty close to the shape of the log that was there the way the face was. And then I took my, my grinder and just kind of cleaned it up there. And I drilled and countersunk for my screws. I've got uh, three inch torque screws holding that on with about a tube of glue behind each board or behind each face. And when these weather out, they'll turn gray like these logs here. And we just come back with some gray caulking and fill these holes and it won't hardly ever be noticeable. I'm glad I've got that chore taken care of. I've got another one around here on the bottom that uh, definitely needs some attention also. And hopefully it's just this bottom one. There's been some termites in there. But they've really got a number on that. Some of the old bark still on there, post oak. This log here I'm not sure how it happened, but it's sitting out about two and a half inches from being flush with this log here. I'll have to jack it up, I suppose, and see if I can push it back and get it lined up and get something underneath it. When it was moved, they just stacked some rocks up there to support it. I've got another section here on the back of the cabin that's going to have to be repaired also. That's pretty nasty termite damage there. It, it's just crumbly. I think that's the only the only log on the back side that's got to have some repair work. Maybe those little termites can just do so much damage. This cabin had a house actually built around it and the log walls were covered up. And so when those little critters came up the wall and got in there, there nobody even knew about it. But we'll be able to repair this and make it look nice. A lot of square nails on this side. I'll have to watch out for that. Some of those are round. There's a couple square nails somebody put in there. But there's round nails and square nails. But either one will mess up a blade or a chain on your saw. This is some of the stuff that I took out of the chink and gap, which was kind of a traditional thing to do. These are pieces of actually the split shingles that they had on originally. And a lot of times they would take uh, the scraps and pieces that weren't good enough for a shingle and they would layer them in the chinking gap to fill it up somewhat before they applied the actual chinking over it. The next project here will be to take all of this old framing out and redo this. There's logs that's cut back and notched. I don't know what the purpose of that was for sure, but uh, I'll take this out and redo it. Somebody kind of chopped on the bottom of that. It's in pretty sad shape. The threshold is pretty well eaten up. I'll just have to take it all out and start over with it. There's some round nails and square nails holding this together. They had access to some wire nails at some time, but I'll, uh, I'll be able to get it fixed up.